mighty and everlasting Father, we come before you this day. Lord God Almighty, I praise your name. Father, for there is no one else but you. You are Adonai, Lord. And Lord God Almighty, we have placed you where you deserve to be, Father, in the first place in our lives, Father. Father, as we seek to hear your word, Father God, may you use me just as a vessel, Father God. There is no knowledge I can give that can save, but it is you alone who can save, Father. There is no knowledge I can give that can heal, but it is you alone, Father God, that can heal. And Father, this is a mere man standing before for you. I am weak, Father, but you make me strong, Father. And for the sake of the people, your children, listening to your words, Father, kindly, Lord, let me step aside and you come and speak to your children. May your presence be heavy upon us, Father. Let your righteous, your righteous right hand be upon us this day, Lord. The way we came in, Father God, is not the same way we shall live. We thank you and we bless your name. For it's the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray, trusting and believing in your holy name. Amen. You can have your seats. You can have your seats. Uh, we will rush. Kidogo. We shall. Not as kidogo. To rush. We will rush. Uh, because there is much ground we have to cover. Um, so bear with me. Uh, media team na joni mewapatia. So many things to work with. But not all of them you shall uh, bring to display. So, um, for those who, because I know there are visitors in this place, for those who have seen me for the first time, my name is James Kimani. Kwa wale unanyonanga na tujai salimiana, sasa, ziseme zijai kusalimia, sasa. Aya, so, my name is James Kimani, uh, my name is James Kimani, and uh, I have seen my mother, this is the first time I think she's here when I'm preaching. That is the woman who has made me who I am right now. She has who brought me up in the ways of God. So I really honor you, ma'am. I am here because uh, God, first of all, God has made this day possible for me. Because we have said, I am here just because of God, Christ. I know I live because of what? Exactly. So the first reason is God who has brought me here. The second reason as to why I'm standing here before you is because Bishop and Mamalis have agreed to me to be here. And also the another point as to why I'm standing here is because Pastor Brian, who is of our overseer here, and Pastor Beatrice, Beatrice, I'm going to say that I'm going to now, Pastor Beatrice uh, and the rest of the pastors uh, at Chilo have also agreed for me to be here. So, nimefuata order. Sa tuneza ingia, ando usiseme alihata pale. Sa watuneza ingia sasa? Aya. I have done it not for men, I have done it for honor. I honor you guys deeply with my heart. So, uh, we have been studying, you have, we, two minutes, Zimeisha. We have been studying uh, about, our, the theme of the year has been, a media team, you can just uh, bring up the book of Isaiah chapter 41. But vile ni mesema, because of time, you just allow me to read. Sawa, sawa. Because of time, we have to cover much ground. So, um, we have been looking at this uh, theme, Threshing the Mountains. That has been our this is a slogan, DCAKZ 2024. Threshing what? The mountains. And the men and the women who have come to stand here to bring the word of God, they have been bringing the word of God to you. They have been spending time and tarrying with God in the prayer closet to get words so that they can come and deliver it to you. Now, I want, to, I want you first to understand that the first reason as to why they stay in the, in the prayer closet is not because of you. I want us to understand that point. They stay in the presence of God because of themselves first. Because I can do nothing, as the word says. I can do nothing without him. So it starts with him and you, then goes to the rest. And then now God can use you as a vessel. To Melewana Sasa. Hi. Sasa. What has been preached? I assure you, if you have applied any of the things that have been preached since 7th January till today, there is a mountain you have started threshing or there is a mountain you have already threshed. If you have applied the words of God, because the word of God says it's alive and what? Alive and what? Active. You just need the word of God. So, if you know that that is you, you have been listening to the words of God, and you have hardened your heart. Today, do not harden your heart. As you hear the word of God, apply it. Start today. 
Isaiah chapter 41. Aya, ni muniruhusu, I do something. So the background of the story of Isaiah, as Isaiah is writing this uh, story, the Israelites have been attacked by the Assyrians. As captive. They did not, well, they were not able to take them away because God had said it through the words of Isaiah. Um, so what is happening is God is telling them about something that is going to come. And that is the story about the Babylonians. If you continue the book of Isaiah, you will understand that once something happened, the Assyrians were about to attack them and they attacked them, but they did not was subdue or overpower. They were chased by God and God killed them. The Bible says, and one angel killed 185,000 soldiers in one night. And that is exactly how God can take away something in your life. It doesn't have to take men. It doesn't. In one night he said that they, you shall remember them no more. And in verse, four, verse 12 he says that you shall search for them and you shall not find. And that is the truth. As they woke up there was no camp. In the camp there were no soldiers to attack them. That is the God that we serve. And I want you to believe that. That is the God that we serve. I am. So God had already passed a judgment to the Israelites. When he's telling them, fear not, he had already passed a judgment to the Israelites. There is another group of people who shall come, and they are called the Babylonians. And now these people shall come and take them captive. But God tells them, fear not, for I shall be with you. Aye. To me understand, from background, kabla to ingie, to kosawa. Aye. So uh, the judgment had already been passed. Nothing was going to happen. They had to go to Babylon. The judgment had been passed. We do not have time to look as to why they went to Babylon, but in, one, in a nutshell, it's because of their idolatry. That thing, rebellious to God, made them, God, God made them to, uh, God actually made judgment because of their rebellion to him. They were starting to take and inter intermarry other people for a long time until it got to a place God had enough. And he was taking them to captivity, not because he wanted to kill them, but because he wanted to correct them. So, uh, in verses 1 and 7, I allow me, I'll, I'll just allow you guys to go and read. In verses 1 and 7, it talks about the nations of the coastlands. We are in Isaiah 41. It talks about the nations of the coastlands who have, been, who have seen Israel's journey and how mighty they have been. They encourage themselves and build idols. That is in verse 7. In verse 7 it says, So the carpenter encouraged the, uh, the goldsmith, and that he smoothes with the hammer him that struck the anvil, saying, It is ready for the slaughtering, and fasten it with pegs that it should not be moved. Now they had seen how God was working in the, in the life of the Israelites. And they encouraged themselves in verse 6 as it says, be of good courage. And they created an idol. Now these are the coastlands. These are not the Israelites. These are the people who are seeing the Israelites. Now, in verses 8 to 14, it talks about Israel and God. Uh, it talks about Israel. And God has chosen them as his servants and tells them to fear not for he who is with them. Now, in, that, in verse 18 to 14 is where we also, to Nakaribia, what we have been tackling us as the church, uh, where God talks about fear not, fear not. And the main thing that God says about, after fear not is fear not, for I am with you. God does not tell you fear not because you are strong. God does not say fear not because you have a master's. God does not say fear not because you have a PhD. God does not say fear not because of anything you have placed above. He says fear not because I am with you. So that's where it starts. It starts with God. It does not start with you. It will never start with you. And that's why I have started by saying the reason as to why people come to stand here, first of all, is because they have a relationship with God. Prayer, the prayer closet. Clo eh, where? Now you know. Kimani, Kimani. So, uh, what I'm trying to tell you, guys, you don't have to stand here. God can use anyone. Stay, tarry in the prayer closet. Tarry there. I will tell you for, for a fact. If I had enough time, I will give you stories of my life. But that will not save you. I am coming to tell you that it works. That is all you need to know. You do not need to know my stories. 
it works. His word is alive and active. That is all you need to know. Every situation you think is big is a small thing in his eyes. As a matter of fact, it's not a situation as you think about it. It is a situation in your eyes. Allow God. Fear not, for I am with you. Usiai kaka kwa group ya wasi ora semati. Wacha kuogo, wacha kuogo, wacha kuogo. Yoni, that is a bad crowd. Wacha kuogo pa kwanini. If it's not God, run away from that crowd. If it is not God, run away from that crowd. Because there is always a power behind something. Let's continue. All we need to do as believers is to confirm if God is with us, for he claims he will help us. Now, we want to answer two questions, critical questions for every believer. Two questions. And this is it. Question number one. If you are writing down, you can just write this. Hey, hey, where? You can just write this. The question is, can we trust God, God's word? That is the first question you need to answer. Can you, can I trust God's word? And the answer is yes. And God has not left us to guess why this is the reason. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 says, For I am not a man to lie. Abu angalia mta wakando yako. Muangalie tena. Muangalie tena. Unamua umemona. Umemona. They have been created in the image and likeliness of God. But those guys can lie. It is God. God alone, it is God alone that will never lie. That's why, ukikosana na mtu kwa sababu ya A, B, C, D, mulipanga hivi na hivi na hivi na hiku happen, it is normal. Default setting ya man, kuna kalai mahali. It is permitted. But it is not good because it's a sin. But there is a likelihood kwa weakness yetu uneza danganya. God has no weakness. He will not lie. That is the only person you need to establish your words to, not your best friend, God. It is God alone. So the first question is, we have answered, the question is, can we trust God? Yes. Numbers 23, 19. He's not a man to lie, he's not a human being to change his mind. Whatever he has said, it shall come. Hi. Question number two. Now I'll rush. Uh, how then can we maintain the presence of God in our life? Now here is our topic of the day. Now siku apatia topic, here is the topic. The topic is returning back to our first love. Now this is what is going to usher us in, into understanding this. How then can we maintain the presence of God in our lives? Number one. Nenajua hata, before ni iseme, kuna watu najua nini niko about kusema. Because I keep on saying this thing. Because... It works. I have tasted and I have seen. Seek the face of God. Nothing else. Point one, seek the face of God. Point two, abiding in him. Maybe this is your first time hearing these words. I have thought about you. The definition of seek is to desire. Go about to require to strive after, to search out by any method specifically in worship or prayer. Now we look at the word abide, to remain, to tarry, to dwell. These are the lame words that you can use to continue to be present. Now these are the two things that shall keep the presence of God in your life. If you do these two things, you shall thresh every mountain. There is no mountain that shall stand. Because you'll realize it is not you who is threshing the mountains. It is not you. Remember Israel was told, fear not for. Fear not for. God is going to make them a sledge. But it is who? Without God, there is nothing. So the, as we had said, you just need to confirm if God is with you. And indeed, he's with you. So what else do you need? Kanoma kamekuja, unapigia bistiako. Without even telling God, no, fear not, for I am with you. Even before say, your friend said that I will help you, God already gave that CV. So why should you go to other people if God himself already offered to help you even before that problem? 
Think about those words. Seek the face of God. I am Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to give you some scriptures. And it will rush through. I will skim through because of time. Um, Matthew, Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Today we are going to concentrate on the first clause. The first clause is, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If God allows me or anyone to be used, Pastor Brian, Pastor Beatrice, Bishop, whoever God wants to use, come and help us and to open up the second clouds, and all things shall be added unto you. I just pray that a day shall come when it is going to be opened. There is secrets in God. But the first thing before you even get to the reward, seek first the kingdom of God. There is no other thing. In the kingdom of God, Nipahali, hakuna shortcuts. You cannot buy your way into grace. You cannot buy your way into favor. You cannot buy your way into the spiritual realm. That, is, that only applies in the world. That only applies in the world. And you and I, with the identity that we have in the book of First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, you being a royal priesthood, you being a chosen nation, a chosen generation, a peculiar people, we are not supposed to be paying for things to earn them. We earn them by seeking God and his kingdom and all other things. But today we are not concentrating on that. Jeremiah 29 verse 13, it says, and you will seek me and find me when you, seek, when you search for me with all your heart. And let me jump to James chapter 4 verse 8. It says, draw to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Amplified says, come close to God and he will come close to you. Now, up to this point, I want you to understand something. When it comes to the things of seeking, it does not start with God. God does not seek you. God never seeks me. It does not start with God. It starts with me and you. The only way God will draw near is if you draw near. The only way that God shall return is if you the only way God shall return is if we. The only way God will return is if we. Yes. That is the only way. That is the proven way in scripture. There is no other way. It is only his mercy. He will have compassion over you and come for you. But if you remain in that place, you shall stay there. Should I give you a story? Ah, yeah. We have the story about King Saul. King Saul aliambio na mungu kitu moja. I want you to go and devote to destruction the Amalekites. All of them. And go read this story because I'm going to rush. And he did not destroy the best things. So he kept the best things for himself. And King Saul th thought, if I offer it to sacrifice to God, it's going to be a good thing. It's going to be a plus to me. So God had any favor more. That is not what God said. God wants obedience. You hear? Now, this is the most interesting thing. And this is what I am going to tell you. Now, what happened is this. So God, uh, King Saul, story, and the kingdom was, was split from him. Uh, cutting the long story short, in the book of First Samuel, the last chapter, I believe it's 20 or 23. I, correct me if I'm wrong. Somewhere there, Tunona, Saul going to war and he dies. And then in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 1, the Holy Spirit and God are very, very intentional with their words. They come and tell us something very important. So an Amalekite that Saul did not kill, an Amalekite that survived and years the country came back, comes and gives the report to who? King David. That Saul is dead. And he says that I saw Saul hanging on his spear and I came and killed him. Now, I want you to understand one thing. If God tells you to destroy something, destroy it completely. Because it is an Amalekite who killed Saul. The same person that they did not devote to destruction because of his greed. is the same person who came to kill him. 
Now, if God tells you get rid of that addiction, I want you to go with these words. Fear not, for I am with you. He will take it away if you work with him. Start by seeking, seeking God and seek him completely. So we have to understand that it is us first, then God. Don't you expect that God will come first. He came first once. He said, yet we, when we were sinners, he first loved us. That was enough. Another time he came first is when he hung on the cross as his son, Jesus Christ. He came first again. But the rest of our kingdom principles, kingdom principles that we need to follow as citizens of the kingdom has to start with us. Has to start with us. Do not bring the world, perspectives of the world into the world. They will never match. It says that darkness and light, they will never come together. They will never. And I, and I said this and I'll say it again. It is not about your feelings. It is not about your feelings when it comes to God. He has compassion over every situation that we go about. But what does the word say? That even when we are faithless, he is faithful. Because he will not deny himself. Not our words, but himself. So you need to understand the word of God and what is contained in the words of God. God is not faithful to our feelings. He's faithful to his word. That's why you need to read the Bible. Don't tire reading this book. This is where your life is. I abiding in him. Um, John chapter 15, verse 4 to 5. Uh, that's the first scripture. Then verse 7, verse 10, and verse 16 of the same chapter. Verse 4 to 5 says, Abide in me and I, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit to itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. As in God and Atupatia a blank statement. Take it as it is. Without him, you can do nothing. And there was, correct me if I'm wrong, there, uh, there was a man of God who came and spoke to us called Reverend Mugo. If you can remember what he said, that the things you think you have done, to God's eyes, they are nothing. They are things we have done. And kudos, if you have done it with God, you have done it because of God. But you need to understand this scripture as it is. It says, without me. So anything you have been doing minus God, in God's eyes, that is nothing. And you need God in everything. Believers, we need to return back home. There is no answer in the world that can save you. There is no profession in the world that can save you unless they walk with God. Unless the scriptures of God are being spoken, unless life is there. And I know some of us already, as I'm speaking, the Holy Spirit has started talking to you, thinking that when you're going for other things, you shall get the solution. You shall not tarry in the presence of God. That is where every solution comes from. That is where every good solution, because he is a good Father. Christ told that man, how do you call me good? And it's only my Father who is good. If Christ himself on earth declared that it is only his Father, truly indeed, he's the only one who can give you the good solutions. There is no other man. And there will never be any other man. First John chapter 2, verse 5 to 6 says, But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know we are in him. He says he abides in him. He says he abides in him. Ought himself also just as he walked. Now we need to walk as Christ walked. If you live, if you, if you, let me show you, let me tell you how the only way you abide in Christ is by walking in his commandments. That is how we show we love God, not with your words. It is by walking in in his commandments. And Christ says, they who abide in me are they that love to do my commandments. The word of God needs to be on your fingertips. You should not just come on Sunday to get the word of God. You should not just come on Wednesday to get the word of God. You should not just come on Monday to get the word of God. The word of God needs to be your priority. 
authority. Seek first the kingdom of God. And the good thing in the new covenant, just as Wangeshi has told us, everything has been placed inside of us. The Bible says there is no need for somebody to come and teach you. You can know God for yourself. You can soar for yourself in the presence of God. The fellowship for the church is very important. But do not just stay at home without God. Monday, get a job, get a chuo, get a wapi, umemweka kwa back boot. You do not want even to have a conversation with him. And then on Sunday you come, he sees, he loves you, he has compassion. The everlasting covenant, the blood that drips every single day speaks for you, Bado. But do not expect at one point that you shall be like a person who tarries in the spirit every day. God is very fair. He says, where are the people that have made a sacrifice, a covenant of sacrifice with me? He never forgets. He never forgets. Do not just wake up and leave your house. Do not just wake up and think that everything is going to be good. The book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, it says, sufficient evil is there for tomorrow. Do not think about tomorrow. If there is something that we have been promised about tomorrow is evil, sufficient enough for everyone. So do not wake up and leave the house without praying. Do not just go aimlessly without prayers. Do not leave the words of God, the promises that he has said. Declare them and live. And see the change that the day shall bring to you. So, um, uh, so the other, other, other verses that you're going to go look into is John chapter 14, verse 21 and 23. Then there is Psalms chapter 84. Let me, allow me just to read this. It says, uh, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of the wickedness. Now, this is a very interesting thing. The words being penned here are by a king. Not by a peasant. You know, the things that we search for and we love are getting into big positions. Now, these are the words of a king who did not just conquer a small territory, but a vast territory. And these are his words. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand this is a king. A king has everything. Everything you've been thinking about that you need in your life, this guy had. And he says, one day is better than a thousand elsewhere. One day in your court. Brothers and sisters, abide. Abide in God. Abide in him. There is no other better person. Now, uh, allow me to read what I have. Uh, this is the reality of God towards Israel. We are the Israelites now through Christ. Now I'm back to the book of Isaiah chapter 41, uh, where we had stopped at, um, where we had stopped at between verse 8 and 14. And then now, to Nendelea to expound on it, it says, uh, this is the reality towards Israel. We are, this is the reality of God towards Israel. We are the Israelites now through Jesus Christ who came for both the Jew and the Gentiles, and made us joint heirs with him. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, 29, verse 11 to 13, this is what it says, For I know the thoughts that I think about you. These are the words of God. Now, you need to be very careful. Peter, uh, when Peter was speaking here last Sunday, he says that we need to be very careful with these words that are direct. Every word of God, you need to be careful with it. But these are very direct words from God. Listen. This is what Isaiah says. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. It's not Isaiah. This is God. This is the one true God. The one that we have sung and praised his name here. He says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you. Which thoughts are these? Says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil. This is a, this is a good place now to say amen. Amen. These are exactly the things that God thinks of you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. God is not about your past. He forgot about that. He's thinking about your future and a hope. 
He goes on and says in verse 12, Then you will call upon me and go to pray to me, abiding. Abiding in him. This is what he thinks of you, but this is exactly what he wants of you. Now the Israelites are coming back from Babylon. And this is what, not, not coming back, they are, kuna nikama inakuwa prophesied years to come. And then, you shall call upon me and go and pray to me. And I will listen to you. Brothers and sisters, we need to abide. This is when God listens to us. Abide. When Jeremiah talks about these words, the Israelites were in captivity in Babylon. So God has a plan to return them back in their land, and they shall call to their God. Go pray to God, and he will hear them. In verse 13 says, And you shall seek me and find me, when you shall seek me with all your heart. Now, this is the thing. Our attitude of seeking should be with all our heart. As we started reading in the book of uh, Psalms, and also in the book of uh, in the book of Isaiah, it says that a, a contrite spirit that God will not despise, He shall listen. You need to be broken before God, and the only way you can be broken is if you abide, because He breaks you. He breaks you. You remember Him calling us a worm, because to His eyes we are a worm, but in Him we are greater than that worm. Only in Him, you cannot be greater outside God. You will never be great outside God. That's why I keep on saying, and I'll hammer it more times enough. Because I'll rather, I'll rather step on your toes. Nyi mneza nisurumia. Mneza nisamehe. But God will never. Hiyo, now mneza nipate off guard. Kwa sababu, I entrusted with you people. And you didn't tell them the truth. I am the watchman here today. Now, here's the thing. Stop entertaining the world. And entertain the word. Wachana na vitu za dunia. Wachana na. Because the Bible is very clear when it says, uh, he, whoever is a friend to the world is an enemy to of, of God. Ah, yeah. uh, not going to have enough time to get into that now. Let us get into the, the reason of this season. The reason of this season why we are always alive. At the moment we are in captivity. In, we are not in captivity in bondage like the Israelites were. Why? Because of the finished work on the cross. Just what we have done today, to remember Christ. But remember, there is something else. It doesn't end there. This comes from the book of John, chapter 19, verse 30. Jesus said, it is finished, and he meant it. What is finished? This means that he had accomplished his mission according to the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 18. The mission of God, the mission of Christ, coming to break the, the chains of oppression, coming to set the captives free. He came to do that, and he did it. And that is exactly what he says, it is finished. To come and give sight back to the blind. Everything that God, Christ, had to, was told as his mission, he finished it on the cross. And nothing remained. Nothing remained. Let's continue. Despite the finished work, now listen. Despite the finished work of the cross, the Bible still tell us, tells us about the possibility of being slaves. In John chapter 8, verse 34, these are the words of Christ. He says, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. Now these are among the things that keeps us away from God. And it says that you can easily be a slave to your sin. Do not entertain sin. That's why the Bible says, and it says in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, get rid of this sin that easily entangles you and focus on the author and the finisher of your faith. It is only Christ who gives us freedom. I'll give you a direct scripture. In the book of John chapter 8, I believe it's the verse 32, it says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Now here, Christ is not telling you about the truth of the world, about the truth of Anani Alisema, Anani Alisema, the philosophers and stuff. Christ is telling you, you shall know of me and I shall, you shall set, I, and you shall be set free. Not Kimani, you shall know of Christ because Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. The only way you can walk in freedom is inside Christ. The only way you can walk in liberty is inside Christ and no one else. 
Uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one goes to the Father except through him. Believe us, there is no truth, there is no other truth to attaining freedom other than this. Stop looking for other, th- other solutions and focus on o- abiding in the courts of your Father and seeking first the kingdom of God. There is no other solution. Mimi ni mekupatia ujanja so that you do not waste time because you've been told, live as the wise circumspectly to redeem time. Now, for you to redeem time, you need to live the right way. The right way is the truth. There is no other way. You shall never find any solution in this world that is permanent. You shall never. Now, kipata kuja unionyeshe. I am willing to put the words of God in test. You will never, never. And this is why the Bible states the, uh, in the book of Ephesians, and he himself gave some to the apostles, some to be prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for equipping the saints for the work of ministry, for edifying the body of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro. Listen, this is ours. This is right now for us. We are being told by Christ, being told by Paul, that we should no longer be children. We have been placed, being given pastors, evangelists, and the people, and the fivefold ministries God has given unto us. Christ has given unto us. And it says, we shall no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried with every wind of doctrine by trickery of men in the cunning craftness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in things, grow up in all things into him who is the head. And that is Christ Jesus. No other person. No other person. To save time, to live as a wise man, as a wise woman, just stick to the truth. He's the only solution. You will save time. You will save valuable time while abiding and seeking in God. I would rather be that vapor, that smoke that James says, that the life of a man is just like vapor while abad- abiding in the body, in, in the, in the, in, when tarrying in the presence of God. I would rather be that person as a smoke but abiding and seeking God. So that when I'm smoke here, and I end up less in a permanent, I will no longer be a smoke. Rather than look for the solutions in this world, only to find out you are going to be a smoke elsewhere. I'm not coming to, to make you afraid. What I'm telling you is you've already been given a solution. Stick to it. Abide. Abide in God. Seek his kingdom. There is nothing else you need. Every person, young or old, this is one thing I got when I was uh, studying, doing my QT. Every person, young and old, it was deposited in my heart, will one day want to know the, the face of God. One day. So there is no need in your young age to start looking for the things of men, and then in your old age expect to, you are going to see God. How do you know about tomorrow? Abide. Abide. Brothers and sisters, seek the kingdom of God. There's nothing else you need. This is the one person who has loved you despite everything you have done. Hakuchuki anakupenda. Sana. Sana. He has written it everywhere in his scripture. The New Age movement about spirituality is not the one Christ prescribed. Leave it alone. It is nothing to do with the Christian walk. It will not bring you closer to God. Rather, focus on abiding in God and seeking his face. Achana naizi vitu naziona online. Leave the stars alone. They have nothing. They have no business with them. Leave everything alone. Hands, siji kusomwa. Achana nazo. You only need to tarry in the kingdom of God. Leave them alone. Those are gods. And that is exactly what took the, the Israelites into Babylon. Idolatry. You took the things of the Canaanites. Wachaneni nazo. That is not yours. So, we're going to finish with this. I'm not going to be able to, give, to read everything because I want, also want us to pray, uh, maybe for two minutes or three minutes. So I'm going to give you as the, these are the last things. So, what lifestyle should I adopt? What, what lifestyle should we adopt to ensure our relationship with God grows? Again, I will tell you this. This I have tasted and seen. It works. I don't have to give you details. It works. Look for anyone here who has walked with God and they will tell you that this thing they do. Number one, prayers. You will call on me and pray to me and I will listen. That is exactly the words of God. Prayers. Prayers. 
I don't know and I don't want to start prescribing times to pray. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. You pray. Don't, me, I'm not here to tell you five, three, what, that might be a covenant that that guy or that person has made with God. But the idea of the Bible is pray without ceasing. Pray. Pray and pray. Let me give you one verse. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7 says, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was hard because of his godly fear. Luke chapter 6, verse 12 says, Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray. This is Jesus Christ. And it continued all night in prayer to God. You can go ahead and read the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 12. Read the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 42. Rather, let me just read this because this is the new covenant. It says, then you will call upon me, go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. No, that is Jeremiah, sorry. Uh, Acts chapter 2 verse 42, 42 says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. One, that is, we're going to come back to that. That is in prayer. That is in reading in scriptures and fellowship, what we are doing today, in breaking of bread, what we did today, and in prayers. You cannot run away from prayers. Prayers is what scales you in the spiritual realm. And you cannot run away from that. You have to put yourself in the place of prayer. Believe us, pray, pray. Prayers is very important. That is everything that you need. Second point. Worship and praise. Now the book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse 3 and 5, is what I'm just going to, you, to read. It says, but you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. Now, what the word enthroned means is that God dwells. Now, when we come here, I know you get to feel the atmosphere and the presence of God. When you worship him in truth and in spirit, it is because the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms that he dwells in praise. Now, for you to keep up that presence every single day, you need to have a lifestyle of prayer and a lifestyle of praise and worship. And I'm not telling you about just normal songs. I'm talking about songs that are spirit-led. Talking about songs that exalt and honor the Father. I'm not telling you about other songs. And I'm not going to mention them. But gospel needs to speak about Christ. They need to cry to Christ. You cannot stand without worship. Worship is what helps you in prayer. Worship is what... You exalt the Father. Psalms 34 to my dog, Soma says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. It says, and they were not ashamed. My time, time is up, so um, just give me five minutes. It says, uh, let me uh, go ahead and read the book of Psalms, chapter 34. Then there's the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verse 1. You can just write them down. And then let me just speak about this kidogo, then I close. Um, Second uh, Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22. Now this will excite some of you. I, I, I believe that you have read about it. But I will want you to read the entire book of Second Chronicles chapter 20. I'm just, going, excuse, I'm just going to concentrate on verse 22. It says, now when they began to sing and to praise. Now when they began what? Wait. Now when they began to do what? The Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab. And the Mount Sinai, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Now, when you abide in God and you seek God well, when you praise Him, it is something else. It is not just the normal praise that you feel that Leo sweat. No, praise is a weapon in the spiritual pardon. It is a weapon. It is a weapon in the spiritual battlefield. Praise and worship. That's why I'm saying you need to know which spirit field worship you're listening to. Not every song is gospel. 
Not every song is gospel. Be very careful. Be sensitive in the spirit to discern. And I pray that God gives you the spirit of discernment. To be able to know what worship truly is and how it looks like. Reading the word of God uh, is the third thing. Then we shall close here. I have nothing else to say. Um, so, scriptures I'm going to give, I'm not going to dwell into them. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, just go and read. I have said that if you start applying the things that we have been taught, you should be thrashing mountains at this point. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, First Peter chapter 3, verse 15, you need to defend why you hope, your hope in God. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, all scriptures are breathed by God. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, the word of God is alive and active. We read the Bible to know also the promises of God, to understand his will, to understand his plan, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, to know who we are in this life, to help you align your will in his, and this will help you in prayers. If I had time, we could have spoken about this, but go read about it. First John chapter 5, there is a way that you can pray, and your requests are made available to you. and grow spiritually. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12, 14. We never got to understand about King Melchizedek because the people of Hebrew who are being written these words, they were dull in their walk, in their maturity. For the Bible says that I could have come to tell you other things about this Melchizedek person, but I can't because I have to come back and teach you the basics. Lord, believe us, we, we, it is not time for us to be eating milk any longer. If you have stayed in the spirit of God long enough, you should start eating solid food. Because that is when now you can be able to discern. The spirit of discernment I am praying, I'm, I'm praying for you to, uh, to get is that which is going to come from reading the word of God. Because you will know the will of God. And you will be able to discern. The Holy Spirit shall tell you it is not good. Because of his word. For he shall remind you of the things I taught you. The word of God works together. There is nothing, there is no loophole in God. The last thing that I maybe I'm going to mention is fasting. Fasting is important. Because now Christ says, says this. He was asked why his disciples were not fasting. And he said, the bridegroom is here. There is no need for them to fast. But when he leaves, you shall fast. Aye. When you finish in the book of, um, when you go back to the story of Isaiah, now that I've showed you Isaiah is talking about also Christ. Verses 15 to 19 talks about what God will do for the Israelites, his chosen people. His, his help is evident in everything for Israel. Why is God doing this? That they may know, verse 20, that they may, may know, now not the Israelites, but the coastlands, the people that are looking at the Israelites, that they may know, see they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this and the Holy One of Israel has created. Do not hide your Christianity, believers. Do not hide your Christianity. Do not hide your Christianity. Do not be ashamed that you love Christ. Let it be known what will happen. They will not kill you. If they kill you, you are going to your father's place. Do not hide your Christianity. Let God be seen in your life. Let the world see God through you. That is verse 20. That is exactly what God is saying. God is victorious and we are through him in the world. Has not, God is victorious and we are through him. The world has nothing to go on God. Even the prince of this world has nothing on Christ when he still was on earth. Read the book of John chapter 14 verse 30 and you'll see that Christ says and says well. That the prince of this world has nothing on me. And now we are inside God then it means that we are victorious with Christ. And the prince of this world has nothing on you. If only you abide and seek God. He has nothing with you. The Bible in the first book of first, book of first John chapter 5 says that they who are born of God are victorious by their faith. You should not live a defeated life. You should never live a defeated life. If your father truly is the one who created heaven and earth. Never. Let's pray.
mighty and everlasting Father, I come before you this day. A thanksgiving in my heart. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for your word. For your word is alive and active, Lord. Lord God Almighty, I pray, Father God, that we shall tarry in your presence. That we shall seek you, Father God, with an attitude that is from all our hearts. That, Father God, it shall be about you, not about us. Lord God Almighty, I know that you have brought people, Father God, in different places. There are some people who are here, Father God, who do not know you, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that even as they are being prayed for, Father, they shall come forth. Lord, I thank you and I bless your name, because this is the best decision that one man can make. That there is no one but you, Father. And Father, it is you that we look at, Father. Father, may we tarry in your presence, dear Lord God Almighty. Father, may we seek you to find you, Father. For you say that if we ask, Father, we shall receive. If we seek, Lord, we shall find. And if we knock at the door, Lord, the door shall be opened. Father God, there is nothing that you have left bare for us, Lord. Every stone has been turned, dear Lord God. And there is no other stone that we should be looking forward to turn. Because you have turned them all. And you have called us victorious. And we are conquerors because we are in Christ. Lord, I thank you and I bless your name. Father God, just as your word says, may we be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Father oh God, may we tarry and seek you, Lord. Because it is only you who can give us, Lord. It is only you who can save us. The people who are here, Father God, who have come for their healing, Father God, may they receive it in Jesus' name. Lord God Almighty, for those people who are calling for the Holy Ghost, Lord, you say that we shall ask during the days of Zechariah, and we shall have it. Father, because it is the latter rain that comes, Lord, but you still say that we need to ask. And Lord God Almighty, for everyone who desires and asks for the Holy Ghost, I pray, dear Lord God Almighty, that you may fill them, Father God, and you may give them with evidence that, Lord God Almighty, we shall be, we shall be Christians who shall not just be walking with a form with a form of godliness, but without power. But, Lord, we shall walk with a form of godliness and power. Lord God Almighty, I thank you and I bless your name. That there is nothing, dear Lord God Almighty, Father God, that shall keep us away from your courts. That, Lord, we shall strive to be standing at your courts, even if it's just for a day, than a thousand elsewhere. Lord, I thank you and I bless your name. For it's the mighty name of Jesus, I do pray, trusting and believing in your holy name. Thank you so much.